All right, good afternoon, everybody. 336 on the 8th of March, and it's Arts and Crafts Day. Welcome back to the garage. All right, so my entire goal tonight is to make these wooden bucks that I had mentioned in my last video and in my last blog post. I'm pretty sure I have all the materials that I need for that, at least I hope so. Um, biggest things being two three-quarter inch thick, two by four sheets of plywood. Um, I don't have a vehicle big enough to put any larger sheets of plywood in. That's why I got these. They're about nine bucks a pop. Several nuts and bolts and everything uh, to mount up between the door hinges both the uh, front hinges and I'm going to try to mount to the back and I'm going to use existing hinges I think for the translation and and uh, and kind of go from there so the first thing I'm going to do is going to cut the, each sheet of wood in half that'll give me a foot on either side and then uh, use the template there that's the the uh, BPO side to kind of start tracing it out I got a uh, saber saw and a, and a uh, circular saw also got padding there just to put on the edge of the plywood between that and the vehicle just for incidental contact not really to protect anything obviously because the paint paint's not in real good shape in case you haven't been uh, haven't been watching that so uh yeah so i'm going to kind of get to work here and we'll see how it goes all right so i ripped the uh gonna do one side at a time i ripped the piece of plywood in half four feet pretty long cut so it's not incredibly straight, but to compensate for that, and this maybe will uh, be a reason to get two of these separate boards, is the mill cut side here um, is what I'm going to use for the base and what's going to go on the ground. Now, it probably is not going to matter that much because I'm going to put angle cuts in these two to make it, you know, the, the buck thing, but... Um, but this is my sloppy corner that I'm going to be cutting quite a bit out, so I don't really care what this looks like. So I got, again, my template here for the um, B post side. I'm going to be setting that up and try to just make it perfectly even between these two. So the car is going to stand a good, you know, six or seven inches off the ground, if not a little bit more, pushing a foot. Um, recheck it on the, on the B post real quick just to make sure I've got it... Uh, this way properly and uh, get the thing lined up, trace it out and use the uh, saber saw to cut the outline of the B post out and then I'll worry about doing the angles over here to make it rollable. So that's the plan. All right, just making it to mark the center. Mark the center on the template. All right, so another potential concern I have here is if I've, uh, actually, I didn't focus on this, but I'm wondering if this temple is level, right? Because you want the car to be level. Um, I don't think I'm going to really stress about that too much because I don't think it's going to matter that much. Um, but you know, then again, I have been wrong before, so hopefully it won't matter too much and I'll be able to get away with it. Alright, so I got the B post measured out here, so I'll do a rough cut with that with the saber saw. Um, and again, I'm not trying to make this a, a clean you know, a tight fit at all between the car and the piece of wood. As a matter of fact, I am going to put some foam in between there. Um, just because I don't see a reason to do that and because I don't want the car to be supported weight-wise. I don't want the body to, to use this piece of wood as a weight support because, oh, I can see that happening. is causing the crumple a little bit. So I want the, 
the B post or the hinge is wherever it's going to be mounted to support the majority of the weight. So go ahead and cut that out and uh, go from there. So now what I'll want to do is essentially make it so that it's triangular on this side and with a, with a nice curving edge here, but flat so that it doesn't kind of get away from me. I do want resting spots even though I'm going to turn it. I do want some flat resting spots. As far as the angles go, I'm just kind of eyeballing it and totally guessing to tell you the truth. And then when I take this one, when I'm done with this one, I'll stick this on top of the other piece of wood and trace the angles out so they match for all four of them. But I don't really have a, uh, a plan here. So I'm going to keep a nice flat edge here. It's about two inches wide. And I'm going to bring it all the way out um, to the corner. All right, so I'll try to show you what I did here. So, the board's four foot long. Centered up, obviously, at 24 inches. So I put a mark on an inch on either side of that. So that'll give me a two inch gap where there won't be any angle. That'll be flat. So then I drew a line from there to five inches wide point. So if, you put, if I put the T-square up, that line measures up with five inches and I just do a straight line connecting those points. So that's gonna be the major angle that the car is gonna sit at. I am totally eyeballing this based on uh, Chef Tush's eyeball look in the videos that I looked at. I don't know if this is right. So from five inches, I went to seven inches and then I marked it again at eight and a half inches from the top of the board. And then I did two more lines one an inch and a half in and the other one three inches in from the right here and then I just essentially connected the dots so what that gives me now is I'm going to have about a three inch wide flat spot a small angle here then it's going to turn the corner again and then the major break all the way out to there so all this if you can see where my scribble scratch is that's all going to be gone so I'll do the same thing on the other side and then it'll be a lot easier after that because it'll be um, it'll be just tracing. But uh, but I'll put these measurements in my blog, and uh, eventually I'll get a link up on the video, which will be above your looking up in your upper right here, and uh, give you exact measurements, which I got to write down so I don't forget. So keep in going. Another thing I'll mention is again this is my uh, sloppy edge here. I'm doing all of my measurements from the mill's sides. Um, specifically because this cut was a little wavy, I've got a little bit shorter of a length here than here. So if I'm keeping a flat distance here, that'll, that'll help me out. Alright, so now I want the other piece 
on the same side, everything to be relative to this. So I don't want to cut the other piece and not make it match the outside shape of this, because if I did that, then the, then the wood's not going to roll evenly. Right? It doesn't matter how it's attached to the car, it matters what comes into contact with the ground. So, okay, get my new piece here, sloppy side to the inside. Pretty much relatively line up. Get my wood clamps here in a second after I get it lined up. Get it clamped down and start tracing. I want the car to sit relatively level when it's on this thing, right? Well, the level reference is going to be difficult unless I use the bottom of the sill, and that's what I intend to do. So, assuming that the sill doesn't move up or down from the bottom of the car, you know, about where the bottom of the sill is on the back is about where the bottom of the sill is should be right here. So I'm going to line up my templates that way so that the uh, the sills line up. I don't know another way to do this. I'm actually a little bit concerned that this isn't going to be good enough. But. just to get the edge off so I don't give myself a bunch of splinters and uh, now I gotta line them up to the car which is probably gonna be just as tricky as this was so I'm gonna pause it here so you guys don't want to see me sand and uh, go from there all right it's about uh, 545 or so that's my uh, initial thought right there with the rear one get the uh, right now it's just resting on the body that's why it appears to be magically sitting there but um, Get that on there like that and attach it weld this piece here to that metal plate and then bolt it through on the wood and then do something similar except going at it like this with the other side uh, but unfortunately the problem now is, is that the body is not level it's canted up quite a bit at the front and because of that i can't ensure that my um, bucks are going to be level when it sits on the ground and i don't want that to happen Right, so when I put this bracketing together, I want that buck to be level to the ground and level to the car. Um, and I can't do that with the car all um, hit, hit, hitched up in the front like that. So I got to grab the lift, the cherry picker, put that front strap through like I had when I lifted the whole body, but leave the rear of the, of the body on the stilts and uh, try to level it out that way. So I'm going to grab bite D real quick and then I get that set up. All right, so I got the cherry picker set up, got the car level. All I did was put the uh, the level across the sill here. Sorry for making you sick. So it can be adjusted a little bit, but that's pretty close. Um, so hopefully that's level anyway. Looks like it. So now I'm going to try to fit this and use the pipes to uh, to measure that out and the square tubing and, and see uh, see what I can do. 
it's uh, it's not uh, not as easy as I thought it would be, but but as hard as I guess I expected. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so I got the um, my version of the little connector or whatever you want to call it here welded up. Hopefully welded up good enough. Screw that puppy back on and then start to dry fit the piece of wood. All right, so I have it clamped up. Again, trying to leave a space between the body itself and the uh, and the wood. So um, mark holes in here so I know where to drill the wood through. And then the only other issue that I have right now is it's not quite oops, not quite level. So the top needs to come towards the back of the car. So it needs to twist a little bit, but because of the way that it's um, mounted, I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that. So there's two ways I can do it. Either I can shim here, or I can try and shim at the bottom here and kind of get the bottom to kick out. I'm not sure which I'm going to do yet. But uh, what I will do first is I'm going to drill the holes and I think bolt it up and I'll see if I can get it to shim up on the, on the, uh, the B post instead. So that's what I'll do. All right, so I got the holes drilled in the wood. Put that guy up there now. The uh, one inch square tubing, three quarter inch uh, plywood. So I got two and a half inch bolts, washers on both sides, and a uh, lock washer on the back, just to try to prevent it from loosening it up. I can't find my 3 8 inch drill bit, unfortunately. So my holes are a little tighter than I'd want them to be. But I'm not putting any weight on these puppies right now anyway, so I'm just going to do two. Let's see how it looks. So I got the spacers from the body mounting kit. So if you can tell, I cut the um, hinge part, I guess you could say, off the hinge. Uh, in hindsight, I could have used angle iron here. It might actually have been a better choice, so it was give me a more of a lip here, but I don't have any. Um, so now what I'll do is I'm going to get square pipe, just like over here. I got this guy ready to go in. I might have to trim him down a little bit more, but the hinges are level to each other. Yeah, so I got to trim out quite a bit here so I can sneak in. Um, so that's why, that's why if you can see it's pushing it away. I got uh, quite a bit to cut away here um, because of the transition piece. So I can get the piece of the, the transition piece cut away here and uh, try it again. All right, so now I got that. I'll weld the pipe pieces to the to the hinges, and then I'm going to have to um, adjust, use the clamps like I did over there, and adjust this vertically to match the distance from the floor on the back piece, and then that should take care of it. All right, so as you can see, I did have angle iron. Um, so I took advantage of that. I got it screwed down, got the poles welded on there. Um, I'm running out of time for the evening, so I'm not gonna get any further than this right now. But uh, this guy's gonna go up. Something like this. Like that. Let's see what the leveling looks like. Holy cow, it's actually level. So now, really, all I need to do is adjust the height vertically and uh, yeah, that's about it. I wish that 
it would be in a little further. Might be able to play with that a little bit. I think I have a problem. Those things are so good. Anyway, instantaneously, it's the uh, it's Saturday now. Um, continuing on with the Buck Project, and the garage is an absolute mess. Looks like a bomb hit it. I just kind of left it the other night, so I'm going to clean up, suck down some breakfast, and get back to work. All right, so I'm pretty sure I've got the front piece here um, set. If you look right there, it's pretty much touching the uh, top of the eight post there so I'm going to cut that back a little bit just to provide a little bit of relief um, but my concerns here were that the bucks were at the same height from the ground so I leveled the car up you can see I got this contraption here with the car being leveled and I just use a level on the sill made sure the car was leveled up and then just measured the distance between the bottom of the two bucks and made sure that they were equal the other concern that I had is that the angle of the buck going like this if you can kind of see my hand in there so they lean in a little bit. Hopefully that's not bad. Um, but with the back one, it leans in just a little bit, just slightly off a level vertically. Um, so I had the front one match that. Um, so yeah, so I got it clamped in there. And I'm just going to go ahead now and uh, mark for placing the drill holes in there and then getting the holes drilled through the wood and through the square tubing. The other thing that I think I'm going to do, especially in the back here, just to provide some added support, I hope, I think I'm just going to put a brace in between the bolt holes, um, maybe even going on an angle from the, the bottom outside one to the top inside one or something like that. Excuse me, just a hunk of metal or something. I got some um, angle iron, an old bed frame that I nabbed from home. Uh, put that in just to provide me for some extra support in there. We'll see if that's effective or not because I'm still kind of worried about the B-post strength in, in doing this. So we'll... Uh, do some more woodworking here, some more arts and crafts, and we'll keep going. All right, so uh, there it is. Obviously, I've got to cut some of the square tubing back a little bit because it's going to interfere with the rolling because it's you know sticking out there. But uh, but as far as I'm concerned, that's uh, that's essentially done. Unfortunately, I'm not positive that I can really test this out without getting the other side done because the car is not going to sit level so I'm going to have to go through some construction now um, hopefully the next the uh, drive, passenger side will go a lot faster I'm just going to be essentially copying everything but I'm still going to put it up to test fit and all that kind of stuff but I'm going to head and start getting some metal cut and all that kind of stuff so um, probably no check-ins until, uh, until a little further along she's got wings looks like it doesn't it uh, so it's what noon yep noon and uh, I think everything is good. Yeah. So I'll put a parts list and, and stuff like that in here. I'll show you a couple things real quick. Um, I put a washer in between there because the angle iron. Uh, just to make the gap the same. And I tried to make the boards as level vertically as I could. And I tried to make them about the same height from the bottom so the body would rest relatively straight. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Um, this guy leveled out on the driver's side in the back there, but the passenger side wouldn't level out without a shim uh, there. So I used a body shim for that, if you can see that in between the wood and the, and the bar stock. Um, another thing I'm going to do, and that's just kind of laying there right now, but I'm going to put a brace across um, the body there. And, and if I can run another one kind of underneath, I'm going to run another one as well, just to provide some more support. Um, and then there you go so everything seems pretty solid um, towards the bottom it gets a little floppy uh, my biggest concern is again is the B post um, and unfortunately I forgot to put the little padding in between the wood so uh, I'm gonna get it on the ground rock it around back and forth a little bit and see how stable it feels and then uh, and then kinda go from there so we'll see how it goes all right, well, she's on the ground. Uh, not crazy about the stability. So it, uh, it wobbles pretty good back and forth. One thing I didn't consider was how much extra weight is in the back of the car uh, as compared to something that obviously would have front fenders and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a little unwieldy to turn because my rotation is not 
you know, I'm going to be rotating from here, which is obviously not the center of gravity. Um, I did put the brace across the body. Uh, what I'm going to do is I've got some, some more angle iron from that bed frame. I'm just going to cut some sections of it and try and put it up into the plywood, just bolt it through, uh, and try to, try to provide some reinforcement to the plywood. And if it doesn't, uh, if that doesn't work, I may not go this route because it just too much work and time and money invested in all that kind of stuff to take a chance of buckling the body or, or breaking something or lose control of it and, and uh, you know, doing some damage. So we'll see. All right. So I put bracing on the back of all of the um, bucks here. A lot more stable. It's still wobbly, but it's a lot more stable than it was. Um, really outside of maybe solid wood or thicker plywood, I'm not so sure that I would get any better lack of wobbliness, if that's even a word. Um, but everything's tight, everything's secure. The, the braces are secure. I got a brace across the body, the two braces across the door still. And, uh, and I'm ready to lift it. So the body doesn't weigh a whole lot, but I tell you, if it if it gets away from me, it, it's gonna get away from me. And go. differential all right well kind of off let me see almost off shot here pull the camera out wow so there you go um, yeah so it looks like it's resting on that part a little bit I may want to take that apart and fix that so that it doesn't totally rest there so that I don't cause any bending um, I'll take a look at that but obviously I can get to the bottom of the car now you can see in here kind of uh, how dirty and greasy and nasty it was just from the probably the old diff kicking off oil um, but I can get to all my welds now on the inside all of the uh, underneath here get all that stuff cleaned up See how my bolt holes got a lot of set screws to take out of there, um, but I can see the penetration from the uh, cross members. They're coming through. Still got some welding to do, obviously, but uh, but yeah. So that's that's a lot nicer. So the only thing I'm concerned with it is kind of resting on the wing there, and I'll probably put it back down, take that piece of wood off, and just take the. Uh, saber saw to it and cut out a little bit but there you go so proof of concept seems to work happy all right so there you go a um, couple things I may have done different probably would have gone with a little bit thicker plywood um, it's still a little wobbly but I think that's because the uh, my angles aren't exact Right, so maybe to either take a little bit more time or just make better cuts. Um, whatever, I think it's good enough. Uh, I do not intend on leaving it like this every day, though. I will put it back down uh, on the ground instead of leaning, just so that I don't exert any force on the body, potentially the body. But I did take care of that gap at the bottom there. Um, Though it's still touching a little bit on the floor pan. I actually started to bend that guy up a little bit. It's all right. Um, so yeah, so I'm happy. It's going to definitely serve its function. Allow me to get everything under here and start going to town about cleaning. and finishing up some welds and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it worked out pretty well. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, so that's about it for today. I'm going to clean up. I never cleaned up the garage. So it still looks like a bomb went off in here. Um, 
Thanks so much for uh, continuing to watch the channel and uh, comment on the videos. Getting a lot of good comments lately. Um, over 600 subscribers. So I'm more than halfway there to, to 1,000. Uh, I have my over 4,000 hours of viewing time in the last year, so that's great. I reached that milestone actually last night, I think. Please, uh, please like and subscribe if you care to do so. And don't forget the website, www.roundtailrestoration.com. So anyway, have a good rest of your weekend, and uh, take care. Cheers.